of uh, the people that I know, um, you are someone who, who knows and loves the saints uh, more than anyone I've met. And you've uh, <laughs> shared with me, like from your childhood, you've always been fascinated by the saints and the lives of the saints, and you've delved into their lives uh, throughout the course of your own life. What is it about St. Peter Julian Amard that uh, draws you in, that you are drawn to this particular saint? Uh, his whole uh, life uh, lived for our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, he, he was uh, from childhood to the day of his death, he was always speaking and you knew he was attached to the person of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, uh, from boyhood, childhood to adulthood. Speaking of childhood, um, I know a bit about your background. Um, I find it very interesting that you were born in one of the biggest cities in the world, in, in New York City, <laughs> and you grew up, um, and you grew up speaking Spanish and English, and yet you're fascinated by Peter Julian Amard, who grew up in France uh, in a very, very small uh, village in Lemur, France, up kind of in the mountains. Um, I imagine you have very different childhoods. Uh, what, uh, <laughs> what was his childhood like? Well, again, as you've mentioned, he was uh, in a small town, and uh, I, what begins his life that really uh, struck me was uh, one day uh, he was uh, in the uh, house and he just ran out of that house. He left his room, ran down the stairs and right out the door into the church that was next door to him. And the church was empty, he tells us, and uh, he did something out of the ordinary. He He's five years old and he runs and sits on the table at the altar and he leans his head against the tabernacle and you never hear of that you never see that so there he is and his mother then becomes uh, concerned where is Peter Julian so she sends his sister Mary Ann to look for him and so suddenly Mary Ann is there at, in the church calling out his name. And uh, he, she says to him, what are you doing sitting there? And very matter of factly, very uh, comfortable, he responds, I am close to Jesus and I am listening to him. And throughout my uh, religious life, uh, reading that those words and remembering that scene, uh, I have come to understand that uh, the whole of his spirituality begins with those lines. I know for you, in your own experience, you felt from a very, very early age that you wanted to be a religious and dedicate your life to God in that way. Uh, did St. Peter Julian Amart have that sense? Uh, when did he have a sense of being called to serve God? Well, I, I would say in actuality uh, on the day of his first communion. Uh, the day prior to the communion, he again uh, knelt before the Blessed Sacrament in the church. And he had a scrap paper and pencil 
and he wrote what he entitled a little book of acts written by me julian amard and it was on the eve of his first communion and it, amongst the seven statements that he uh, wrote he said in one and i'm paraphrasing uh, I give myself to you, O Lord, because you have given yourself to me. Uh, please come and live in me. And uh, those words I, again, have seen in his life. He really lived those words. And uh, above all, on the day of his communion, he states, that he then promises our Lord, I will be a priest. So how old was Peter Julian Amard roughly when he had his first communion? Uh, in those days, you had to be 12, okay, 12 so years old. At 12 years old, he had this sense of almost like, a, you know, people who study Amard, it's almost like a little germ of a gift of self. Um, yes. And he has a sense of a call to a vocation, um, but it wasn't an easy road. No. What uh, What happened no. next? Well, of course, uh, he then uh, wanted to uh, to go into the priesthood, and uh, the father uh, is always portrayed as not wanting him to do so. Uh, but, Ju Peter Julian Amart's father. Peter Julian Amard's father, uh, but the reason would be because he was the only son, and he had a sister, and uh, the point was that the eldest son would inherit the father's uh, business. Uh, it was a, a good business, and also, um, again, caring for the sisters. So uh, uh, the father was not in favor of him pursuing the priesthood. However, as uh, we know, uh, he did pursue the priesthood and uh, was ordained eventually in 1834 and lived all his priesthood until his death. 1868. One thing that is often remarked upon about St. Peter Julian Amard as a, a young person was his desire to receive the Eucharist and receive it frequently, which was not common practice at all. I wonder if you could share a little bit about um, that story. Well, uh this is uh, between uh, prior to age 12. Around eight years of age, he, he was introduced to going to church by his mother from the very beginning. She always attended the four o'clock benediction. Uh, the church was close to their house, and so at four o'clock in the afternoon, even as a child in the crib, she would wrap the baby up and carry the baby with her to this benediction. But when he began to, uh, you know, at the age of six, he became an altar boy, and, and uh, then he would accompany his sister to Mass uh, because she could receive communion, but he could not. And his custom was to sit next to her and when she returned to her pew and sat there with the blessed sacrament having been received, he would then lean his head against her chest. And uh, Mary Ann was not only his eldest sister, but she was also his godmother. And so he would lean his head against her and he would tell her, he would say, Godmother, Godmother, I can feel his presence. I can feel his presence. 
So that, again, that intimate friendship, that formation uh, is throughout his life. And now eight years old, he cannot receive the communion until he's 12, but he is always close to Mary Ann when she receives the, uh, the, the Holy Communion because then he feels the presence. Uh, so all these pieces uh, are assisting him till he reaches the age of 12 to receive the Eucharist himself and also uh, uh, forms uh, this intimate union of Amart and Christ. There's some fun uh, pictures in the chapel in Lemur of uh, Peter Julian Amart as a young man kind of secretly studying Latin while he's working because he wants, he still has this dream, but he's got to work, um, you know, for his father, for his family. Are there any moments in this uh, kind of childhood, young journey that stand out or speak to you uh, about his spirituality or something that just is meaningful in that period? Uh, he had read somewhere uh, that uh, it was always good to, if you were close to a friend's house, to always make a point to at least knock on the door and say hello. And and so he read this and he applied it to himself. Uh, anytime he visited the uh, or passed by the church, he would, even in his delivery errands, uh, delivering this oil, he would enter the church and, and go to a quiet, sheltered area and put the oils down and and kneel there and, and to say hello to his best friend. Uh, it was his way of uh, keeping that uh, friendship and closeness alive. And, and also a very, uh, an aside in this too is, he actually believed that our Lord had given himself in the in the Eucharist uh, to Peter Julian personally and so Peter Julian as a response to that uh, gift uh, even founded the congregation as a thank you and so when his members were to be praying before the Blessed Sacrament exposed it was the presence of the adorer to the presence of the Lord, presence with presence as a deep thanksgiving for our Lord being present in the Eucharist. So it, it really raised uh, a regular practice for Father a for Amar to be uh, personal. It was always a personal, person to person. Uh, of course, uh, we listen or we hear that or we read that and uh, we say, well, you know, as a boy, as a young person, but uh, in the background, we re remember that uh, the grace is working in him. He is open and receptive to this movement of the spirit and so uh, he is formed by the eucharist by our lord in the blessed sacrament